Hello everyone, so in this particular video we are going to learn about the object oriented programming in a python. So till now whatever we have learned in a python that was a procedural programming. Now we are going to learn about the object oriented programming and this will help you a lot in your programming because whenever you will work in your real world application right there the importance of the object oriented programming concept is a very much important and it will help you organizing your code properly. So you should know the concept of the object oriented programming that only we are going to learn in this particular video. So let's start. So OOP stands for the object oriented programming. It is a way of writing code that focus on object and classes instead of just action. So before to object oriented programming whatever we have learned right that was a procedural programming. In the case of procedural programming what actually we do we only focus on steps or procedure to solve a pro problem. Code is organized as a list of instruction. Suppose you had to let's take one example suppose you had to do the sum of the three variables. So in this case what you will do first you will create one variable then you will create a another variable then you will create another variable and then finally you will do a, a sum of this all the variable means step by step we are following right. So that's how actually we write a code in the case of the procedural programming. Now whenever you will work in a real world application and whenever you have to write like this right the your code will become a messy. To overcome this we have a oops concept. It focus on object that represent a real world thing. It is code is organized around class and object. So in the case of object oriented programming we create a uh, we create a one class and based on this class we create a different object that's how actually it works. Now we are saying a class and object all the time right. What is this class mean what is this object means we should know. So class is nothing but a, it is like a blueprint a blueprint or template for creating a object. Now what is the object let's take one example. Let's suppose we have a one object car an object is the actual car built from a blueprint. Let's take one example suppose you are working in a one company that is a car factory and that built a different car. Now we are understanding about the class and the objects and we are taking example of a, a car factory. Now this car factory they build different cars. So this car is nothing but a, this is a real entity right. So object is nothing but a, this is a real entity that we are saying as a car. Now what is this class? Class is nothing but a, it is a blueprint. It is a blueprint. Now what this blueprint will contain? This blueprint will contain the properties. Properties and it will contain the action. Action. Now class is nothing but a, it is a blueprint which contain the property and action. Now based on this class, based on this class only we create a different objects, a different object. Now you are saying like object is car like but we have a class under this class, class is nothing but a blueprint and it contain the properties as well as action and based on this we can create a different objects. So we can create a one object for the suppose we have a Toyota car, we have a Toyota car. Similarly based on the property and action based on this class we can create another like uh, Tata car. Based on this uh, class only we can create another car like a uh, uh, Kia car. Like we have a one class that contain the property and action means we create one class in a python and in this class we define what are the properties of the object what is the action it can have and based on that what actually we do we try to create a different object out of this particular class. So that's how it works in a object oriented programming. So instead of writing a, a different function suppose you are creating one function for the uh, Toyota and you are writing a uh, you are getting the output similarly you are creating another function for the Tata and you are getting auto output instead of doing this you can create one class this class will contain the all the property and action and based on that we can create a different objects and the entity. So that's how actually it works in a, a real world application. Now class class is a blueprint or template for creating an object it define the property and action that object will have example think of class as a car design car blueprint defined property what car has color model speed what action it can take what car can do drive brake honk it is just a plan or template it doesn't exist physically so whenever we say class right it is just a blueprint it is a just a template it doesn't exist physically now what is the object 
an object is the actual car built from a blueprint it has a specific value for the property like red toyota with a speed of 60 km per hour and it can perform a action like drive brake and now let's see how actually we can create a, a class so how actually we first we write a class and whatever the class we are creating right that name we have to give in our case car is the one class we are creating and after that we define a, a different property so this is nothing but a, we are saying property right so we initiate with the def and the underscore underscore in it right and this will come later we'll understand in the next video what is constructor but as of now you understand first we are defining one we are creating one class under that we are creating a different function you can say this function is nothing but a method now here we are defining a different property like what is the color what is the model what is the speed now after that we are defining a different method like car can drive and the car can break right so that's how actually uh, we create a class so we have created only one class car and we have defined the property here and we have defined the what are the method and what are the action it can take now let me execute now based on this car we can create an object how actually we can create an object i am creating one car one object i am writing car one and after that i am calling this car this class i am calling and what are the color and model right so it is a red color and it is a model is a toyota i am passing similarly i am creating another car too i am passing it is a blue color and it is a honda now if i will execute and after that i am calling the directly action car one dot drive so you can see car one got created it is a red color and it is a toyota so, so i am getting the output the red toyota is driving at 60 km per hour so you can see i have created one function right now this function i am printing the self dot color this is a color color is red the red model model is nothing but toyota we have created toyota model the red toyota is driving at what speed speed is a 60 km per hour because we have defined the 60 color 60 km similarly break the blue honda has stopped the blue honda has stopped so like that actually we can create a, a different means we are creating one class we are defining their property here we are defi defining their method here and based on this class we can create a different objects like we can create one object for the toyota we can create our one object for the honda so like that actually we can do so this is how actually it helps us in organizing a code so why oops it is easier to manage and organize code for the large project you can reuse your code create multiple cars from the same class it models real world problem more naturally so i hope you got the idea so this was a theory from the object oriented programming perspective but in next video we will do more practical and we'll try to understand each thing one by one